Well, happy Friday, everyone. Corey Barker here. Today I have a pretty cool compositing trick using 3D in Photoshop Extended. Now, what you can do, uh, one of the great things you can do still with 3D in Photoshop is import models created in other applications. And there's a lot of free models out there on the web. And one, I've, one I like a lot is a site called archive3d.net. And you go there and you can download a lot of different um, 3D models in different categories. And just want to show you how you can achieve a pretty good level of realism by importing a 3D model and just applying the right lighting and effects to it. Because um, what I have here is this scene of, of a road. It's got the mountains and everything in the background. What I want is to actually make it look like there is a plane about to land on this road here. Now, I found this airplane graphic on that Archive 3D website. And you can see I've already opened up the document here inside Photoshop. And using 3D, I can actually move it around and different angles. Now it looks very basic right now, it's got very basic color fills, but all the elements are there and looks pretty good. So let's put it back to the front facing position there and all I'm going to do is just simply drag and drop this 3D layer into that 2D image, um, that background image. So I'm just going to go and grab the layer, add the shift key when you do this and it will drop it in the center and right away it already looks like it's sitting on that road because the ground plane actually lines up with the uh, where the image is lying and everything and that looks pretty good. So now we need to move the object itself. The ground plane looks good. It looks like in the right perspective and all. Probably could adjust it a little bit, but I think it'll, it'll go ahead and work fine for what we're doing here. But so I want to leave the ground plane where it is, but I need to re reposition the plane. Now the pl this particular 3D plane has its landing gear down, so we're going to actually position it as if it's um either coming in for a landing or just ha or has just taken off. Either way, it really depends on how you interpret the image. But I'm going to go into the 3D panel here. Let's go ahead and bring it out, see, out here and position it up here next to the properties panel because we're going to need that. So I want to select scene. If I select current view, then it's just going to simply let me change my angle of view and you'll notice the ground plane changes with it. So you're changing your angle of view, not the object itself. So you want to make sure that scene is selected. And the first thing is I'm going to go up here in the options bar and grab the third, or actually it's the fourth tool over here on the uh, right side, and that is the 3D slide tool right here. And let's go down to the document and click and drag down, and that's going to make that 3D object slide forward, as you can see right there. And we'll bring it just a little bit more forward. So clicking and dragging down slides it forward. And then I'm going to come up here and grab the third tool over, which is this 3D drag tool. I'm just going to click and drag up and that's going to move the model up. Notice my point of view is staying in place, but the plane is uh, changing its angle because we're changing the overall position of just the plane. So that it's at a good height. Now I want to use my rotate tool and actually click and drag up and just give it a slight angle like it's going skyward, right about like that. Now I think I'm going to use that slide tool once again and just click drag down and just bring it closer a little bit. Now notice how the shadow is staying in place like it's supposed to. Or it's actually staying on the ground plane because we're just moving the plane off that um, off that runway area there. All right, so that positioning looks pretty good. Now what I want to do is actually make it look like this plane is in this environment. Right now it doesn't look, really look like that. So the first thing is let's go over to the lights section and see what lights we have going on here. And it's got a default infinite light applied to it. For now, I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. So there's no lighting on the plane right now. It's just a basically a silhouette against the sky. So to go back into my original layers panel here, and let's minimize that, reselect the background layer, do Command or Control A to select the entire image and then copy that to the clipboard. Go under the edit menu and choose copy. Reselect the 3D layer and you're going to select the environment setting here in the 3D panel. It's at the very top. And then over here, you have the IBL, which is the image-based light. So we're going to go ahead and uh, choose new texture for that. And it's going to remember the dimensions of that background. So go ahead and click OK when the dialog comes up. And then we'll go back into that folder and choose Edit Texture. Now we're simply going to paste in that background image. We want it to reflect that environment. So we're going to paste that and use that as an image-based light. So let's go ahead and close that document, save the changes. And now that image wraps around our plane. Now let's go and change some of the surface properties of the plane itself. So in the 3D panel, we're going to select the first tab here at the top. 
And then let's just click directly on the body of the plane itself, right on the object here. And you'll notice it selects the object here automatically in the 3D panel, which is the fuse, uh, fuse which is fuselage. So over here in the properties panel, we're going to boost up the reflection of this plane just a little bit, bring that to around, now we'll do it around 50. And it doesn't need to have any shine, so we'll just bring that shine down to a very low setting here. And with the roughness, I'm actually gonna take that to about five, because I don't want it to have like this mirror finish, but I'd rather just have it kind of this soft reflection of the, of the environment here. So now let's go up and change the color, or the actual base color of the plane itself. Go up here into the diffuse setting here at the top of the properties panel right up here. And right here, just click on that um, little icon and choose edit texture. And just go ahead and give this a base 50% gray fill, close it and save the changes. So that's looking pretty good. So now let's reselect the environment and let's actually grab the 3D um, rotate tool and you can actually move around that reflection on the plane. Notice you can see it in the background as a visual aid, but notice how it's changing on the plane itself. So I'm actually gonna get it to where it looks like it's reflecting that environment or the road on the bottom of the plane there and that looks pretty good, I think. All right, so if we wanna test that, we can do a quick render real quick. I'm gonna do Shift Option Command R and that's going to do a little bit of a render. We can see what kind of things we've got going on here. So it's looking pretty good. It's actually in shadow. It's um, got some things happening there. It looked pretty good. But we need to add another light to this. So we need to actually mimic the sunlight in this image. So go ahead and reselect our layer. Let's go in, into the lights section. And actually, we're going to add a new point light. We're not going to use that infinite light. We're going to add a new point light here. And let's go ahead and take our 3D move tools and let's just position this up. Now we can see the sun in the image is kind of up and to the right just a little bit. So that's where we, where we will position this light in relation to our 3D model. So we'll just position it up and the higher I move it, you'll notice the shadow starts to come into view there. Let's actually move it up and I'm just gonna again move it and slide back And as I do that, that shadow will get itself in the right position, right about there. There it is. All right, so that li that looks pretty good. Let's do another render test real quick. Shift Option Command R, and let's see what we get. So it's looking pretty good. I'd like that reflection to be a little bit brighter on the bottom there. So let's boost the intensity of that image based light just a little bit. And that's just, just under the color setting right here, this is, is an intensity. So we'll just boost it up to 200%. Let's do another render and see what we get. Might be too bright, but we'll see. No, it actually looks pretty good. So it's looking pretty good. So let's bring actually, and this is where you just get to the point where you're starting to tweak it. So I'm gonna reselect that fuselage uh, setting there and let's bring that reflection a little bit higher. So it's reflecting even more. I had it around 50, but let's put it at around 75, 80, and we'll do another render and see what we get there. That's looking pretty good. So that's that's looking uh, a lot brighter, like it's reflecting the environment a lot better there. So, okay. So I'll just let that render a little bit and I can make some few more tweaks, but hopefully get the idea of that now. Notice how it's kind of realistically, you know, portraying the, the road and then the sky on that. And it's getting a real, real, really realistic reflection there. Also, Let's reselect that background image for now. And I'm gonna make a duplicate of that. Let's press Command J, and then we're gonna put a blur on this. So I'm gonna filter, go to blur and choose radial blur. Now we're gonna make this a zoom blur. So go ahead and make sure zoom is checked on. And we're gonna keep it relatively small at around 25 for the amount. Now make sure the target is roughly in the middle. We want this vanishing point to be right in the middle here, right as it indicates here. So I think right in the middle there, middle there will work pretty good. So I'll go ahead and click OK. Now we're getting that sense of movement there and that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go back to the plane here and actually continue the render just a little bit and we'll just jump right back in here as soon as it gets done with that render and uh, finish this up. All right, so with a little bit more render, we can tell that some more details come in there, but what I wanted to adjust now is actually the shadow here a little bit. So I'm actually gonna go into the light section again, make sure I have the point light that I created um, selected and you can actually zoom out really far in your document and expand it out and see exactly where that light is that falls outside your boundaries and I'm actually going to move it 
over just a little bit more and higher. Let's actually position it a little bit higher so the shadow is more concentrated under the plane there, right about there. So if I zoom in there, there, that shadow looks a little bit better. Now I want to go into the light or the properties uh, panel and actually increase the softness of that shadow. Right here is the shadow setting. I'm actually going to highlight softness and make that at about 15 for the softness of the shadow. And then once again, we'll do a quick render and see what kind of result we're going to get real quick here. And actually that does look pretty good. So I'll just give that a couple minute, more minutes to do um, a little finished render and then we'll add one more effect to this. All right, so I'm gonna continue on a little bit here. I can let it render for a little while longer, but I don't have that kind of time and you probably don't either. So let's go, let's go ahead and move on to the next part, which actually is to go ahead and create a duplicate of this 3D layer. I'm gonna press Command or Control J and it, um, makes things a little bit darker, makes that shadow a little bit darker, but then I'm going to make a third instance of that layer, Command-J once again, and this time rasterize that 3D layer. I'm just going to right-click or control-click right on that layer itself and choose Rasterize 3D, and then run that same radial blur we ran a moment ago in the background on this duplicate image, and it will actually give you a sense of movement on the plane itself, and then we'll just drop the opaci opacity of that down considerably and just let that blur kind of just subtly uh, peek through. And you can see that layer gets a little bit darker there. But ultimately, there we have our plane, our seemingly simple 3D plane. I'm actually gonna crop this in a little bit. Get rid of that edge there. But our seemingly simple 3D plane now appears to be taking off or landing, one of the two, we don't know, right from this airstrip.